Good morning, Booktube, YouTube. My uh, people who watch these videos. I am sitting here in my usual place in the dining room, drinking coffee. Drinking coffee. Just made a fresh pot of coffee. And I, I thought I'd say good morning on this, uh, it is November the 28th, 2019. It is 10.07 in the morning here in West Michigan. And I'm writing in my diary as usual in the mornings. I'm on page 979. For the year 2019 and I just thought I'd stop by and say hello because uh, my wife went to church this morning she is in the nursery I think they're having what people call in America a Thanksgiving service I, I don't know about this Thanksgiving but uh, I am always giving thanks I mean, I am thankful for uh, this warm house, thankful for my health, thankful for my family, thankful for sunshine this morning. Thank you. I'm thankful that I can pick up my pen and write in my, my book of life. I'm thankful that I can read. This morning I've been reading the Collected Works of the St. John of the Cross. And uh, I mentioned I was uh, going to read from The Dark Knight in my, one of my recent videos, and I, I kind of lost the desire to do that. But when I was looking through my my collected works of St. John of the Cross. What I usually do sometime in the year is I just read some portion of some, well, if you look at the collected works of St. John of the Cross, what you have in the volume, it opens up with the ascent of Mount Carmel. And then uh, the ascent of Mount Carmel and then you have, after that treatise, you have the Dark Knight. And then you have the Spiritual Canticle. The Spiritual Canticle is basically a mystical commentary on the Song of Solomon in the Old Testament. Uh, if you go through the, the Spiritual Canticle, you will see many references uh, Old Testament quotes from the Song of Solomon. And then after that you have the Living Flame of Love and then you have his minor works. His, um, so that's what's in the collected works. There's, there's, he, he, uh, if you read uh, the life of St. John the Cross, he had a very active life. <laughs> and so he didn't have always the luxury to sit down and just write. He had to write when he had the time. And uh, when you read some of his treatises, they kind of break off. He never really finishes them, which to me is always kind of, it kind of, kind of, it's not kind of sad, but I wonder if he, what, if what he would have written if he was able to write the, everything that he wanted to write and he had time to write. But one thing, but what you do have in the collected works of St. John the Cross is that I tell people you have a summary of Christian spiritual teaching of the last couple thousand years. Because St. John the Cross was not only immersed in the Bible, but he was also had read other spiritual writers throughout the centuries. And when you read him, you can see uh, like a systematic presentation 
of Christian teaching that had been passed down from the, the Desert Fathers, from the Eastern Orthodox Fathers, the medieval Carthusians, the Franciscans, the... Uh, so, and also to be really, to be kind of simple here, is that in, basically the Christian life is the same. <laughs> In, in certain elements and aspects, the, the spiritual life for all Christians is experienced the same way throughout all of Christian history, Christian ch church history. So you'll find a certain kind of conformity or certain things that are always taught and emphasized and experienced by Christians, men and women, throughout church history. But what you find in St. John of the Cross is a systematic kind of setting forth of those things on prayer, on uh, union with God, purification, uh, all the different things. That's why I really like him. And, but it's also good to read the Carthusians, to read St. Augustine, read Gregory the Great, read, supremely read the Bible. The, immerse yourself in all of Scripture, the Old and New Testament. One thing I like about reading St. John the Cross is he's always quoting Scripture. Now, you might not always agree with how he exegeses the text, but what he sets forth, to me, is basic the very basic spiritual truths about the spiritual life of what the Bible teaches. Now, you have to remember that St. John of the Cross wrote to women and to men who were contemplatives. They were men who and women who felt called to a life of prayer. Another good book, I, I came across this recently at the Book Nook, is this book, Fire Within, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and the Gospel on Prayer by Thomas de Bray. This is really a good... I've read a lot of books on Christian spirituality, mystical theology, the teachings of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. This is a very good overall overview, and I recommend it. I keep it by my my desk and my main study. So yeah, this morning I was reading the, the I just start reading the Ascent of Mount Carmel. Usually I'll read it. They're not, it's not long. You can probably read it in probably two weeks. I read it in the mornings. This is my other copy of Collected Works of St. John of the Cross. I have three copies like I told you. I have this copy, I have this copy, and I have this copy. This is the one I'm reading this morning. I like it because it just opens up and whereas this one is kind of beat up and it kind of doesn't stay flat. This one I I just like it because it's it also stays flat. I also have it on CD-ROM I can put this in my computer, in my laptop, and I can read it. It has the two different translations. It has the Collected Works of St. John of the Cross, translated by Kavanaugh Rodriguez translation, and then it has the Complete Works of St. John of the Cross, the E. Allison Pierce translation. I like, I like the Kavan, Kavan Kag, Kagala, can't pronounce his name, translation. But you can get it on CD-ROM. It's also, you can read it online. The Collected Works of St. John of the Cross. You just go to your search engine and they're all online if you want to read them online. I also recommend this book on St. John of the Cross. The Life, Times, and Teachings of St. John of the Cross. God Speaks in the Night. And this is just a big reference thing by different scholars. Uh, Carmenite scholars, 
on St. John of the Cross. It's really, it's really very thorough if you want to read about his life and not only his life, but St. Teresa of Avila. It has all kinds of, it's just a big book. I, I look at it all the time, but it's a good reference thing if you're really into St. John of the Cross. So I was reading that this morning on this day of giving thanks. I think I, I'm really thankful that I can sit down in this warm house, in this suburban neighborhood, in this quiet little cell, and I can read St. John of the Cross. I can read the Bible. I got my Bible out. I can sit here writing in my diary. I can drink coffee. I can listen to classical music. I can, I'm free. <laughs> I don't have to worry about bombs dropping on me. I don't have to worry about snipers. I don't have to worry about starvation. The Lord has blessed us richly and I am very thankful. Also, I, I've been reading this morning, I really recommend the Reformation Commentary in Scripture. I recommend all of them. It's good to read Christians throughout church history to read the Spanish mystics, to read the Desert Fathers, to read the Carthusians, monastic spirituality, to read the 17th century English Puritans, to read you know modern New Testament scholars. I've shown you J.K. J. K. Beale and people like that. And but supremely. We must read the Bible, study it, pray over it, ask God, the Holy Spirit, to teach us and to open up the riches of God's Word. And then we judge everything by God's Word, everything that we read, whoever it might be. <laughs> St. John of the Cross, C.H. Spurgeon, John Owen, Thomas Matton, you know, any New Testament scholar, Old Testament scholar, anything that we hear on the radio, Christian radio, anything we see on television, televangelists, we're always to judge and discern everything by the light of Holy Scripture. That's what I go by. Now I read all of these men and I see things in that, that are biblical that I can see are Scripture and some things I say I just hold my judgment on and let and because God knows their hearts but and uh, but I think that we ought to read all different kinds of Christian writings don't stay within our own comfort zone as Christians now I know some like I, you all know that I profess to be a Calvinist I've known Christians who are Calvinists who go to Calvinistic churches and all they read is Calvinistic literature. All they read is the Puritans. All they read is that. And, but I, I'm kind of opened. I mean, I try to... The church has always existed <laughs> since the time of the, of the times of the Apostles and the New Testament. The church has always existed, even from the time of Adam and Eve in the garden. And so... I like reading what Christians have written and what they have said throughout the ages. And that we can learn from the church from the past. Same as that we can learn from Christians today and in the world. Not only in America, but in Africa, South America, Asia, New Zealand, Iceland, <laughs> France, Germany, you know, even R Russian Orthodox Christians. Uh, Coptics in Egypt. You know. At one time, there was a thriving Christian world in Syria, Syriac Christianity. <laughs> and so, I'm thankful that I know about all these spiritualities, all these Christians and what they have written, and I have them in our library that I can go down in the lower level and I can read writings of these men and women throughout church history. So I'm thankful for those things. But like I said, we must read the Bible. <laughs> we, 
We don't want to lift up men and women. They're just they're just in, imperfect. They don't have the full truth of God's word. So we must read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. But you can learn a lot from the Reformation commentary. You can read from St. John of the Cross. You can read from, you can learn a lot from men and women who love the Word of God, who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who have repented of their sins and put their faith in Christ. They trust nothing but the cross. They know that they're saved by sovereign free grace, that they've been clothed with the righteousness of Christ, that they've been accepted and before the presence of God because of what Christ accomplished on the cross that they trust nothing else but, but Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Christ alone, grace alone, and that we know that by the Holy Spirit that we can live out the Christian life and the power of the Holy Spirit, that we have died with Christ, that we've been raised with Christ, and now that we live out His divine fullness, and that that's what we're thankful for as Christians that we can experience the riches of Christ because we have been mystically united by faith to the risen, exalted Christ. So yeah, so I just thought I'd share these thoughts with you on this day of Thanksgiving. My wife and I are not going to have any kind of big meal today. We had that before our son and his wife and Josie and Cora went up to have Thanksgiving with Emily's extended family. We are babysitting their dog, Ollie. Ollie's with us today. He's sleeping by my feet. So I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving day. I do thank you for your subscription and for your comments and do hope you're having a good reading week and I just want to stop by and say what I'm thankful for and thankful for you and pray that you might come to know the riches of God in Christ Jesus and until next time bye